Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. In a world where humanity has been turned into entertainment for alien overlords, can one man's defiance ignite a revolution for freedom? Let's get into the story. My name is Kale, and I used to be someone else. Someone with a life, with dreams for the future that extended further than the next meal, the next grotesque spectacle they'd forced me to perform in. There's still enough of that man left inside of me to fuel a hatred hotter than the core of our stolen sun. The collar around my neck is a constant reminder of what we've become. Pathetic curiosities, playthings for the starry collective. They arrived nearly two centuries ago, sleek ships descending from the heavens like predatory angels. We threw what we had at them, missiles, bombs, prayers, everything. It was like swatting at a leviathan with a twig. The war was over before it truly began. They didn't kill us all. We were amusing. With their sleek, multi-jointed bodies and those unsettling, multifaceted eyes, they couldn't comprehend our tenacity, our raw aggression. We became pets to them, ironic considering their clear technological dominance. My talent became surviving in the arena. The cheers of the crowd, a mix of shrieking, starry, and resigned human murmurs, were a constant symphony of degradation. Each victory brought not a sense of triumph, but a weary understanding that the next fight might be the last. Each scar on my body is a map of that time, a testament to claws, teeth, and alien weaponry they gleefully saw fit to place in my hands. Tonight, it's different. The handlers are jumpy. There's a tension in the air thicker than the usual pre-fight haze. Rumors have floated around the holding pens for weeks, whispers of other arenas shut down, fighters disappearing into the night. The starry, it seems, can't control their pets as easily as they once believed. Maybe it's time to stop being a pet. They hustle me through the corridors toward the arena entrance. It's a familiar path walked countless times under the indifferent glow of alien lights. But tonight, something catches my eye as we pass a maintenance duct. A flicker of movement in the shadows. It's gone in an instant, but it's enough. My heart, grown accustomed to the stoic rhythm of survival, quickens with something almost like hope. Before the handlers can force me into the arena, I jerk free, planting a brutal kick into the nearest starry guard. It staggers back with a screeching cry and I don't hesitate. I lunge for the duct, ignoring the shouts and the stun blast that singes my shoulder. The duct is cramped and suffocating, but I welcome the darkness. A cacophony of shouts and weapons fire erupts behind me. They don't expect this, a pet daring to challenge its leash. Panic would be my downfall, so I focus on moving, propelled by desperation and a flicker of newfound purpose. After what feels like an eternity, the cramped metal gives way to a wider chamber. A voice cuts through the darkness. Kale! Is that you? Though whispered, it sounds like thunder after the sterile silence of the duct. Who's asking? My voice is ragged, unused to anything but the growls and roars of the arena. A figure emerges, lean and tense, illuminated by a dim, handheld light. She's human, that much is clear. Her eyes glitter with a ferocity that mirrors my own. Anya, she says, extending her hand. And if you're half the fighter, they say, we might just stand a chance. I clasped Anya's hand. The touch of another human after so long is electrifying, a jolt of something I can't fully name. It ignites a warmth within me I thought had been extinguished long ago. A chance at what? I ask, my voice still rough. A chance to fight back, Anya replies, her face is hardened, but determination burns in her eyes. A chance to take back what's ours. She leads me deeper into the underbelly of the starry compound, a hidden labyrinth of pipes and blinking machinery. Introductions are hastily made. Merrick, a grizzled technician with hands perpetually stained with grease, and Lynn, a woman with sharp eyes and an even sharper wit. These are my conspirators, my unlikely comrades in this brewing rebellion. You're just in time, Merrick grunts. The uprising begins tonight. My mind races. Uprising? Is that possible? We're outnumbered, outgunned. The starry sea is nothing more than a peculiar source of entertainment. Anya seems to sense my doubt. We've been studying them, Kale. Their tech, their routines, their arrogance. They never believed we were capable of this. Her voice thrums with a conviction that both scares and excites me. Tonight I learned that resistance is simmering in compounds across the planet. We have scientists reverse engineering starry weaponry, fighters training in secret, even those tasked with broadcasting starry propaganda to dejected human settlements subtly spreading coded messages of hope. The plan is audacious. Disrupt communications, sabotage power grids, and strike at key starry outposts, all in a coordinated attack. Tonight, the domesticated turn on their masters. 
The command center is a riot of blinking lights and frantic starry voices. Anya had been right. Their overconfidence is their weakness. We move like shadows, a human strike team amidst the hulking alien technology. Merrick, with his patchwork knowledge of their systems, works furiously at a control panel, his fingers a blur in the dim light. I'm back in my element. Violence, a language I understand all too well. But this time, it's different. This time, there's no cheering crowd, no fickle sense of force spectacle. It's cold, calculated, and fueled by a seething rage I've been suppressing for years. We fight tooth and nail. Starry guards are surprisingly easy to dispatch once stripped of their technological toys. Their gangly limbs make for awkward close-quarters combat, their reliance on energy weapons leaving them slow to react when a human fist meets their chitinous faceplate. The roar of an explosion rips through the complex as Lynn detonates their makeshift arsenal. Across the planet, I picture identical acts of defiance unfolding, small embers of rebellion coalescing into a wildfire. Finally, it's just us in the command center, ragged breaths echoing in the sudden silence. Merrick flips a final switch, and the alien screens flicker and die. Outside the compound is plunged into darkness, the glow of the city far below the only sign of civilization. We did it, Anya exclaims, the tension bleeding from her voice, replaced by a weariness laced with exhilaration. We actually did it. But I know it's not over, not by a long shot. This is merely the beginning, the first growl of defiance from a species the starry so foolishly underestimated. News of our success spreads like a shockwave across the planet. Human settlements erupt with cautious joy, the long-suppressed embers of hope igniting into a blaze of righteous fury. I feel it too. A tectonic shift within me, the numbness of the arena replaced with the fiery determination of a warrior finally given a cause worth dying for. The starry strike back, of course. Swift, brutal reprisals target centers of resistance, but with their communication network in shambles, their response is uncoordinated and sloppy. Their over-reliance on tech worked against them. Now, the same tech is in our hands. Starry weapons are clunky for humans to use, but we adapt, learn, turn their own power against them. The battles are bloody, a desperate struggle for every inch of reclaimed territory. We are outmatched. But with each fight, we grow more cunning, more resilient. Survival fuels ingenuity. Lynn turns comm towers into broadcasting beacons, spreading messages of resistance. Her voice is a rallying cry against despair. We mourn our dead. Each loss stings, but it doesn't break us. Every casualty becomes a martyr, further fueling the fire of the revolution. For the first time in a long, long time, I dare to dream of something beyond the next day, the next fight. The starry sends envoys, offering a return to the old ways, surrender in exchange for the illusion of comfort and safety. Their voices are laced with bewilderment, a lack of understanding about this strange, savage species they once so gleefully subjugated. We execute the envoys publicly, a grim spectacle that sends a clear message, there will be no more leashes. The war grinds on for years. It becomes an ugly, brutal thing, leaving scars on the world and its people. I bear my own, new scars layered over the old, each marking a battle won or a comrade lost. Anya becomes my closest confidant, her steely resolve tempered with a pragmatism that keeps us moving when victories are few and morale falters. We're more than just soldiers. We've become symbols, whispered stories of defiance around flickering campfires in the ruins of the world we once knew. We pushed the starry back, reclaiming cities and territories once lost. Their gleaming ships began to retreat, abandoning outposts that once seemed impregnable. Each withdrawal is a victory, and a reminder about how wrong they were about us, and about what makes us human. Yet even as we advance, a cold realization slithers into my mind. The starry, with their superior technology, could wipe us out at any moment. Why don't they? The answer comes in intercepted transmissions, messages that confirm a growing fear within their ranks. We're more than just defiant pets to them now. They see us as a virus, relentless and unpredictable. The knowledge changes us. We're not just fighting for freedom, but for the right to exist on our own terms. This war becomes less about winning battles and more about surviving them. A gruesome chess match where we must force the enemy to the realization that we're not worth the bloodshed. We begin to reshape the world in the ashes of the old. Fortified enclaves spring up, not just havens, but centers of learning and innovation. Starry tech is dissected, understood, and eventually improved upon. Scientists once relegated to studying the nutritional properties of alien food rations now build our own communication systems, our own ships. 
It's a grotesque testament to our potential, unleashed by the twin fuels of necessity and fury. It's Merrick, of all people, who finds the key to our ultimate triumph. Deep within the tangled underbelly of a captured starry communications hub, he stumbles upon something startling, records of other conquests, other species subjugated much like we had been. He also uncovers the horrifying truth. The starry draw their power from the very misery and suffering they inflict. The realization twists the knife in my gut. Our suffering was not just their cruelty, it was their fuel. It is this perverse system that binds their collective, and in doing so reveals their ultimate weakness. Our rebellion, our fight for freedom, threatens not just their dominance, but their very existence. With this knowledge, a new plan crystallizes. It would be the most audacious thing we've ever attempted, a gambit born out of desperation and powered by a newfound understanding of the enemy we face. I look at Anya, her eyes reflecting the weight of this revelation, and I see a mirror of my own determination. The plan relies on calculated deception. We would faint withdrawal, a tactical retreat designed to lure the Starry into a false sense of security. They would perceive our shrinking territory as a sign of weakening resolve, fueling their arrogance and thirst for the misery that sustains them. In their hubris, they would see it as a chance to reassert dominance and replenish their dwindling power reserves. We sacrifice hard-won settlements, leaving them as tempting targets for the Starry to reoccupy. We spread rumors of discord and disillusionment within our ranks, fueling the perception that our rebellion is dying out. And as the Starry spread deeper into our territories, we prepare our final trap. The core of the plan lies in a weapon none of us have ever seen, a theory hidden within salvaged Starry data, a device capable of disrupting their psychic bond, the very source of their collective power. It's a gamble built on stolen knowledge and the frantic ingenuity of our engineers. If it fails, this device could wipe us out along with the Starry. But if it works, it could shatter their cohesion, leaving them vulnerable and fragmented. Anya and I stand on a hill overlooking what was once a thriving human city, now infested with Starry occupiers. My hand tightens around the detonator entrusted to me. This is it. The culmination of years of fighting, of sacrifice, and of a hope that felt impossible for so long. Are you sure about this, Kale? Anya asks, her voice barely a whisper. No, I admit honestly, but neither were we sure the first time we stepped into the arena. This is just another kind of fight. With a trembling hand, I press the button. The hill shudders and a blinding flash envelops the city. It's followed not by the roar of an explosion, but by an eerie, gut-wrenching silence. Then come the screams. The starry soldiers writhe and convulse on the streets. Their ships list haphazardly in the sky, some careening toward the ground in flaming trails, They've always moved with an unnerving synchronicity. Now their movements resemble those of a swarm of dying insects, devoid of their collective purpose that was their greatest strength. The psychic shockwave echoes through me as well, like a thousand needles piercing my mind. But we humans, with our messy emotions and our individualistic drive, weather it far better. The starry, connected yet so fragile, are crumbling from within. When the dust settles, a strange sight greets us, the Starry are still alive, but dazed and disoriented. Their power structures, the very foundation of their society, has imploded. It's chaos, an enemy in disarray ripe for the picking. The battle that follows is brutal, but it lacks the desperate energy of past encounters. We press our advantage, fueled by years of pent-up rage and a cold certainty that this is the final blow. Yet, even amidst the bloodshed, there's a sense of melancholy. In a twisted way, I almost pity them. They were conquerors who couldn't comprehend they were building their own pyre. In the end, it's not a glorious victory parade, but a ragged band of exhausted survivors returning to a scarred but reclaimed world. The years after the war are a whirlwind of rebuilding and reckoning. The starry, their psychic networks irreparably fractured, retreat from our planet. Some remain isolated and broken, echoes of the power they once wielded. We monitor them cautiously, remnants of a threat that forever changed us. As for humanity, we emerge from the ashes altered. The scars remain on our bodies and the land itself, but so too does a resilience we never knew existed. New societies rise, messy and diverse, grappling with governance in the inevitable clash of ideals. I find an unexpected contentment away from the front lines, tending to a small farm with Anya, where former gladiators and scientists plant seeds together under the same sun that once fueled our alien oppressors. There are nights when the horrors of the past claw their way back into my dreams. The screams of the arena, the flash of the detonation, the smell of burning cities. 
It's a price I gladly paid for the simple joys of tending to the soil, of feeling rain on my face, of watching something other than death grow strong and vibrant with each passing season. Sometimes Lynn visits, regaling Anya and I with stories of the burgeoning councils and trade routes of the new human world. She's in her element now, her sharp mind a driving force behind our reconstruction. The sight of her always reminds me that even out of the bleakest soil, life finds a way to bloom. We've won back our world, but the fight isn't truly over. There will always be threats seen and unseen, those born from within and from the stars above. But I look to the future now with a stubborn determination that would have seemed foreign to the broken fighter they put in chains all those years ago. We were leashed once, meant to be pets. Now, we walk free, wary but resolute. The stars don't frighten me anymore because I know what we're capable of, the darkness we've endured, and the fire that still burns deep within the human spirit.